Tom Hanks is Forrest Gump. If you'd like more information about elephants and how you can help return animals to the wild, call for a free fact sheet. The lines are open 24 hours a day until the 5th of January. All the best. A detective story spanning the centuries on BBC Two shortly as the Day of the Pharaohs continues with the search for the mysterious lost tomb of Egypt. You know, my philosophy in life is live and let live. <laughs> In a dispute with your neighbor. Why don't you take a straight line down the middle of the what? hedge and say that's the boundary? Where would you draw the line? Wait and I'll wait till my dying day to get these kids safe. They're all too ashamed to show their faces because of what they've done to me. They should bring back capital punishment for people like that. I ask you a question. People are so narrow minded. Neighbors at War, Monday at 9 30 on BBC One. My remit here is to protect Britain's interests. That includes protecting her reputation as a just nation. Mrs. Harriet Smith is the new British ambassador to Ireland. I'm scared you'll end up like that. That was Beirut. This is Dublin. It never happened here. New drama for the new year. The ambassador begins Sunday, nine o'clock on BBC One. Big hit movie for BBC One now, receiving its first showing on British network television, winning no less than six Oscars, including Best Actor for its star. Tom Hanks is Forrest Gump. On the rapids. The biggest one in Gauntlet. When do we do that one? <laughs> well, we don't do that one. But out of control. They're so creepy. I just think we have to get away from them. You can get another chance to run the Gauntlet. We're not stopping at Bridal Creek. <laughs> I'm taking my family. And I'm leaving. Meryl Street. Do what I say when I say it. Otherwise, we got no chance in hell of making it through. Opens a series of Sunday movies. The River Wild. Sunday at 7.15 on BBC One. Shirley Bassey, as you've never seen her before. I've I know, been I standing in this gown but that's... for nearly three hours. Oh, I love these glasses, I love it. I get to kiss every man. On tour with the bombshell from Tiger Bay. It's incredible. Shirley Bassey, tomorrow at five past ten on BBC One. Okay. Cut. A series marking the Muslim month of fasting begins in 20 minutes here on BBC One. Chris Eubank talks about the meeting with Mike Tyson that changed his life in Faces of Islam. The main evening news first on BBC One with Peter Sissons. A breakaway loyalist terror group has admitted carrying out last night's gun attack on a Belfast bar. Gunmen from the Loyalist Volunteer Force killed one man and wounded five others and the group threatens yet more violence. A tanker is blown two miles onto rocks as the west of England is battered by storms. And abandoned on New Year's Eve, the baby boy left in an East London alleyway. A splinter group of loyalist terrorists whose leader was murdered in the Mays prison last week has admitted killing again to avenge his death and said this is not the end. Gunmen from the loyalist volunteer force shot dead the latest victim in a Belfast bar last night. Security sources say one of the main loyalist terrorist groups with political links at the peace talks may have assisted the attack. The Northern Ireland Secretary Mo Mola is to break her New Year holiday for security talks tomorrow. From Belfast, Tom 
Coulter reports. A new year but an old image from the streets of Northern Ireland. People laying flowers at the scene of the latest terrorist attack. Tonight the Loyalist Volunteer Force admitted they carried out the shooting. Last night two masked gunmen walked into the Clifton Tavern and opened fire indiscriminately, killing 31-year-old Catholic Edmund Trainer and wounding five others. In their statement, using a recognised code word, the LVF said the murder was a reprisal for the killing of their leader, Billy Wright, in the Mays prison on Saturday. The LVF was formed 16 months ago, when Wright broke away from the larger Ulster Volunteer Force, unhappy at their participation in the peace process. Security and Loyalist sources suspect one of the mainstream Loyalist terror groups must have been involved in last night's shooting, as the LVF are not thought to have a presence on Belfast Shankill Road from where the attack was launched. I am concerned that, uh, you know, where this killing has come from. If it has come from one of the mainstream loyalist paramilitary organisations, then I think that the, the process is finished because uh, I think that uh, the process is ailing at this point in time and I think a killing, I guess, will just finish it off completely. One thing that can be said about the people of North Belfast is that we are very wise as to who carries out sectarian assassinations. And whilst on paper the LVF may have claimed the, the responsibility for this, I doubt that the, the vast majority of people are convinced by it. The LVF has warned of further attacks. The RUC chief constable has no doubt about their ruthlessness. This is an organisation comprised of dangerous terrorist criminal killers prepared to kill people for no reason other than the religion that those people follow. So of course they present a real danger to society. Many people had hoped the new year would mark a new beginning in the search for peace in Northern Ireland. The events of the past few days and the threat of further violence have made the politicians' job even more urgent and more difficult. Tom Coulter, BBC News, Belfast. Storms and gale force winds have swept across Britain tonight. Power supplies in parts of North Wales have been disrupted and a 22,000 tonne tanker was forced onto rocks near Tor Bay in Devon. From there, Stephen Cape reports. Carelessly on rocks, the 22,000 tonne Santa Ana. Luckily, she was not fully laden with oil when she went aground, but Coast Guard officers said she had three holes in her side. It's not clear how badly damaged she is, but 270 tonnes of diesel fuel oil is being pumped into higher holding tanks as a precaution. Eventually, efforts will be made to shift the vessel into open water. Well, as far as I can see, they're going to stabilise the, the vessel first. Uh, and the next tide, when the, uh, the Fominara gets here, uh, which is a tug, and it will assist it with the other vessels, they're going to try the, maybe then and pull her off. It was a tricky operation. The steel hull groaned as the efforts were made to drag her free, but it was helped because the weather improved. Then, after six hours, the ship was free. Still listing to one side, the Santa Ana made for open water.